In this video demonstration, we will explain the probe templates that are included in the probe SDK. We will explain the difference between the three templates and explain and demonstrate how to use a template to start a probe development project. Before getting into the specifics of the probe templates, I want to mention the technology used to produce the templates. The templates are delivered using the Apache Maven Archetype technology. We can get a good introduction of this technology from the main website. This is the Apache Maven website for Archetype templates. We can see here that they define an Archetype as a project templating toolkit. It's also defined as an original pattern or model from which all other things of the same kind are made, and Archetypes enable developers to be more productive. Probe SDK version 2.2.0 provides three different templates for creating three different types of probes. These templates enable probe developers to be more productive by enabling them to quickly spin up a new stubbed out probe development project. The local probe archetype is for probes that will monitor something on the local robot, for example, CPU usage. The remote probe archetype is for probes that will monitor a resource that is remote to the robot, for example, a remote web server. And finally, we have the remote probe POBC archetype. POBC is an acronym for Probe Oriented Bulk Configuration. And this is for high scale probes that monitor something where there is a large amount of inventory, for example, a remote VMware environment. Note that the probe templates make a distinction between whether we're dealing with a local or a remote probe. It's important to understand that difference. UIM expects the inventory tree produced by a probe to have an IP addressable device at the root of the inventory tree. This is not a problem when writing a probe that monitors a remote resource because by definition if you're communicating with a remote resource on the network it's going to be IP addressable. However, Suppose you create a probe that is monitoring a log file on the local system. In this case, we are not interacting with an IP addressable device, so we must instruct the probe framework to insert the local robot as the root IP device. The probe SDK handles this for you. All you need to do is choose the appropriate template. When building a remote probe, you have two templates to choose from. The only difference is that one of them supports probe-oriented bulk config and the other does not. Determining which to use depends on what the inventory produced by the probe will look like. For example, if the probe monitors a resource that will produce a small inventory tree, for example a web server, then you most likely will not need POBC. However, suppose the probe produces a large and dynamically changing inventory, such as a probe monitoring a VMware environment. In this case, you will need POBC. Once you have decided which template to use, the mechanics of creating a probe project based on the templates are fairly simple. To create a new probe project, you open a command prompt in the directory where you wish the project to be generated, and you run the maven command shown here. This starts an interactive session where you will be prompted for the following properties. Group ID, which is typically the organization domain name. Artifact ID, which correlates to the probe name, version, probe version, and the Java package where you want your probe source code to be generated. Let's demonstrate this process now. I have opened a command prompt in the location where I wish to create my new project, and I start the process by issuing the maven archetype generate command. For this demo, I'm going to choose the first template, which is the Remote Probe POBC archetype. For Group ID, I'm going to use com.ca. For Artifact ID, which is also the probe name, I'm going to call it POBC example. I'm going to accept the default version. For package, I'm going to use com nimsoft probe SDK example. Once the generation completes, we have a stubbed out complete probe project. We can verify that we are at a good starting point for our development by testing that we can build this probe and deploy it to a robot at this point. This is a best practice I like to follow so that I am certain I have a good starting point to base my development on.
we have successfully built the probe. After the probe finishes building, we can find it in the target directory of our project. Here is our built probe. This is what we can deploy to the robot using admin console. We've created and built the probe project from a template. Let's now see how it looks when we deploy it to the robot. I'm going to log on to admin console and deploy the probe to the archive. After uploading the probe to the archive, I can deploy it to a robot. And here we can see that our probe was deployed to the robot and it has started. And we should be able to verify that we can open up the configuration console. And this is about all we expect at this point because this is just the template and just wanted to verify that we're at a good starting point to base our development on. Next, let's take a look at the contents of the probe project that was created from this template. Let's take a look at and review the contents of the new probe project that we created from the template. Notice here that I have opened up the project in my Eclipse IDE. I'd like to start by looking at the probe schema XML file in the source main resources directory. This is the file where the probe developer declares the inventory types, the associated metrics, and if it's a bulk configuration probe, we also have the bulk configuration template definition. Notice at line 15, the project template stubs out a single inventory element named example computer system element with a single metric called example metric. The probe developer should modify this example element and metric and add additional elements and metrics as needed to satisfy their requirements. Also notice the template definition section starting at line 32. This is also stubbed out and should be modified to suit the requirements for the inventory produced by the probe. Keep in mind that the template definition section is optional and should be present only in probes that support probe-oriented bulk configuration. Recall that any elements we define in this file have associated Java classes automatically generated. So we should have a Java class named Example Computer System Element, and we will find that in the Target Generated Sources folder here. Keep in mind that since this is a generated class, you should not modify it. Just be aware of what it is and how it gets created. Finally, let's look at the primary Java class for the probe. It's called Probe Main, and it contains three methods where the probe developer needs to focus their development on. The first method is called add default configuration to graph. This is where you configure what will display in the probe configuration UI, what actions can be taken against profiles, and what properties a profile will have. Next we have the test resource method. In this method the probe developer can add logic to verify properties specified in the probe configuration UI to verify if there is a good configuration or not. And finally, the get updated inventory method. This is where the work gets done. This is where the logic is kicked off that gathers the metrics and creates the inventory. You can see the note starting at line 164 that gives a tip to the probe developer that this is where they need to populate their inventory data set. We also provide a couple example lines of code, 171 through 173, showing the basics of how to create inventory elements. The probe developer should delete the comment starting at line 163 
through the example code at 173 and implement their own logic. In this video demonstration, we explained the probe templates included in the probe SDK and we demonstrated the usage of a template. This concludes the video demonstration.